It's Wednesday for you, and we're moving on to talk about some other disorders that you're born with that are called genetic, but that aren't caused by just one gene. They're caused by many genes. So remember, you can always pause it and stop and give yourself a chance to kind of fill in your journal entry, copying what is black and filling in the answers, because I know you can answer some of these. Some of this is a review from when we did cell division. So pause it as you need to have some more time to fill in if I'm going a little too quickly. But um, when we go ahead and look at this journal entry, we're actually looking at someone you may recognize. Her name is Sarah Palin and she is in politics. She was once the governor of Alaska and was running for vice president in 2008. Um, she actually has a son, Trig, who is getting ready to um, turn five now. But here in this picture, he's shown with his mom while she was on the campaign trail. And he was actually born with a disorder called Down's syndrome. This disorder is caused by an entirely extra chromosome. So humans should have 46 chromosomes. It turns out that individuals who have Down syndrome have 47 chromosomes. And so this type of disorder is going to cause a lot more symptoms than just a gene disorder, where there's just one section that's wrong. And so this is actually a picture here that shows the different chromosomes. We should have two of each. Sometimes they're folded over, just depending on how they're laying in your cell. But we should have 46. And a chromosome, when we look at a single chromosome, all that it is, is coiled DNA. And a chromosome, you can see it in these little banding patterns. A chromosome has lots or many genes on a single chromosome. Um, the baby gets their chromosomes from their mom, their mom's egg, and from the dad's so when where are these chromosomes coming from? How did the baby end up with too many? It really all has to do with how the mom and dad gave the chromosomes. We know that the sperm and egg are made during a special type of cell division called meiosis. And so what must happen when there's a baby who has Down syndrome or another chromosome disease is they actually, we can look at the cell, we see one, two, three, four doubled. That should mean that each one will have two singles at the end after meiosis. Remember we go from four to haploid, which would be two. And so we should separate the doubled chromosomes. And then we should separate the doubled the, I'm sorry, we should separate the pairs, and then we should separate the doubles. But what happened here is instead of two pairs going here and two pairs going here, one, two, three pairs ended up here. And so this is a mistake where you would end up with a whole extra chromosome. And then these would have two few chromosomes. So that is going to explain how Down syndrome actually occurs. When we're making this farmer egg, they can end up with too many or too few chromosomes. The question for you to stop and think about is why would having too many chromosomes cause such a bigger deal than just having a gene disorder? Keep in mind what our gene disorders are. Huntington's, cystic fibrosis, K-sacs, red-green color blindness, hemophilia, PKU. Those are our gene disorders. So why would this baby have so much more wrong if it's a chromosome disorder? So we're going to move on to take some notes. And if you needed some time, just rewind and pause it with the blue writing up there so you can get it filled in. We're going to be on page 62, I believe, talking about chromosome disorder. And this is a short section because there's just three that we need to learn. Chromosome disorders are inherited due to problems with the entire chromosome. A normal human, let's use yellow, a normal human has 46 chromosomes. 
What we're going to see here is when the chromosomes don't separate during meiosis. And we end up with an incorrect number. Too many or too few. So normally during meiosis, we should be doubling, separating the pairs, separating the copies, right? We should, if we start with two, we should end up in one each. But mistakes can happen. And these are mistakes during meiosis. And we call that mistake non-disjunction, not separation. That's what non-disjunction means, not separated. So non-disjunction happens when they fail to separate. We do need to know this word, aneuploidy. Now we know ploid. Ploid means number of chromosomes. You, we know this from cells. We know that you, like eukaryotic, means true nucleus. You means true. And an means not. So not true number of chromosomes is what we have when non-disjunction happens. So what we're going to do real quickly is just look at three examples. Remember, you can always pause it if you needed more time. And so we've got this picture to kind of give us an idea of too many or too few. So let's look at some examples. One example is called Down's syndrome. It's caused by an extra number, 21. So we should have pairs, two, 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 two. This is actually a little girl, because she's XX, but she's got three number 21s. And so this is going to cause mental retardation. It is going to cause heart defects, an enlarged tongue. It actually causes some characteristic facial flattening. And all of this is because a chromosome has thousands of genes. And if I have too many chromosomes, I'm making extra copies of all of those genes. So we do need to know Down syndrome is an extra 21. And that's why we sometimes call it tri, because there are three instead of the normal two. This is what's called an autosomal, if you'll add this word in here. Autosomal chromosome disorders mean they're your body chromosomes, numbers 1 through 22. The next two are sex chromosome disorders, and these are going to be with the X's and the Y's. So these are sex chromosome disorders. Down syndrome is an autosome. So here's two more that we need to know. The first is called Kleinfelters, and it's XXY. And here's a way to remember it. Long word Kleinfelter, long gender description. XXY, three, when we should normally have two. And it is going to be a male. Notice the Y makes you a guy. Y makes you a guy. Y makes you a guy. So um, it is going to be male, but they are going to have some different secondary sex characteristics. Like sometimes it has to do with whether they grow facial hair or not. Sometimes it has to do with their build, their general body build. They won't have any of the anatomy of a girl, but they will not be able to have some of the things that a man usually has like the body hair, right, like chest hair. We can use testosterone therapy to treat it, but not cure it. We can't cure any of these, because this is happening in all the cells of the body. The third is called Turner's syndrome, and this is what we call a monosomy, meaning there's only one when we should have two. And this is called XO. It is a female, because there's no Y to make you a guy. But they aren't able to make their sex cells, and so they are infertile. So we do need to know those three, Downs, Kleinfelters, and Turners. So you want to take the time to practice that. And that's what we're kind of going to do next. Um, next, we're going to do a little bit of practice looking at um, being a 
genetic counselor. And so this is the page that you're going to be working on for the first part of class, and then you'll go to the computer lab. This is another presidential candidate from this year, Rick Santorum, and his daughter, Bella, actually has a chromosome disorder. So what you're doing on this assignment, genetic counseling, is you're going to need to do some reading. Now, you can read as a class. We've practiced this before, where we just go down the rows and each person reads a sentence. Right? So there are plenty of sentences, so it might be worth it to read it together out loud. And then there are three questions here to answer. And then in the back, there's what we call a karyotype, which is a picture of the chromosome. And then we're actually going to talk about another disease, a gene disease. And so we're going to look at um, a little bit of what a genetic counselor does, which is talk to an individual about their disease. Um, at the end of the period, so the last 45 minutes or so of class, you're going to go to the computer lab and pick out what genetic disorder you would like to research. So maybe you know a genetic disorder, maybe you know someone with sickle cell, or maybe you're really interested in Huntington's or cystic fibrosis, or maybe none of those really interest you. So what you're going to do is you're going to Google genetic disorders. So turn on the computer, log in, and Google genetic disorders. The first website that comes up is this website. And so the first question is, do you think this is a good website? It's owned by the University of Utah. Is this trustworthy? And then you're going to click on the different levels. So let me just show you what this is going to look like. And so this is the second half of class. After you've been a genetic counselor, you're going to go to the um, Computer Lab 601, and you're going to work on this assignment. And so when we click, it takes us to the genetic disorders library. It's interesting. It shows it almost like a building with all these different floors or levels. There's some information about genetic counselors, scientific, uh, scientist profile, information about screening newborns, and all of these different diseases. It is going to ask you first to focus on one that's on level one, a single gene disorder. Those are the ones with the um, burgundy circles. And then later it will ask you to pick out a level three. You won't be able to finish all of this in one day. So this is why you'll go back to the computer lab the second half of Thursday as well. So um, this is where we'll stop for Wednesday.